perfecting it, inshallah. Yeah, so when we say that we believe Muhammad or Rasulullah, we're pledging that we will practice this religion the way he brought it to us. We will pray the way he taught us to pray. Our relationships with each other will be based on the foundations that he presented to us. Okay, we will love each other, you know, for the sake of Allah. And we will learn to lower our wing to the believers. What does that mean, lower your wing? That means be kind. Give the believer the benefit of the doubt. Instead, Muslims today are giving the benefit of the doubt to the Kafirs. You'll take the word of an unbeliever over a Muslim. You'll get angry at a Muslim and hold a grudge forever, which is going to keep you from getting into paradise too. Okay, that's a sin of disbelief to die holding a grudge with for, against another Muslim for no reason. Okay, I'm not talking about they killed somebody. I'm talking about because you mad at them because they checked you or something stupid like that. You're not going to enter paradise. That's a sin of disbelief. Okay, so when we talk about the Islamic creed, we're talking about what it is, what are the foundations of what we believe in as Muslims. We say we believe in Allah, but do we really? Look at how we're living our lives. Look at the, the, uh, the life choices we're making. Look at how we're treating one another. Look at the things that we say about each other. SubhanAllah. So let me put the PowerPoint up on the screen for today's lecture. Last time we met for this class, we talked about how Islam forbids us to attribute Allah to his creation. In other words, to try to say that he resembles us or we resemble him in some way or some manner. Allah has eyes. His eyes are like us. He created us in his image. You don't know what that means. When he says he created you in his image, that means he created you to be the way he wanted you to be. He didn't create you to look like him, like the Christians said. So that's what we talked about the last time we met. Today, let me put the PowerPoint up on the screen. Let me screen share too. I can tell I'm not screen sharing. And today's class, as you can see, is not going to be long. It's just a couple of slides. Today, we're going to speak about how Allah is not restricted. And what do I mean by that? Well, there are a lot of Muslims who waste their time on social media arguing and debating. They always argue as to how can Allah be above his throne? but still come down to the lowest heaven every night to answer our dua. How can Allah be above his throne, but come down to the lowest heaven during the night of Qadr? You know, they ask these type of questions. Well, it's because these Muslims don't understand that Allah is not restricted. As we talked about the last time we met for this class, Allah is nothing like us. We can't compare ourselves to him. He can do what we cannot do. He can be in a million places at the same time. He's not restricted. When he says he's above his throne, that doesn't mean that he's restricted there. He is beyond having limitations placed on him. He is beyond having limitations placed on his body parts. Nor is he contained by the six directions like we are, okay? He's not contained by South, East, North, West, Northeast, Southeast, none of that stuff. He's nothing like us. That's why it's wrong to believe that he created us in his image. You know, he created us to be the way he wanted us to be, but not to be like him. Listen to what one of the early scholars said. This person whose book that this is adapted from, Sheikh Tahoe, he made the statement in his book that Allah is transcendent beyond all limits, ends, parts, components, and instruments. These are words that this uh, scholar said, but these expressions are not reported in the Quran or the Hadith. This is what the words he used. And why did he use this terminology? He used this terminology to try to break it down, 
to try to explain to everybody how a law is not restricted to be in one place. <coughs> Listen to what uh, Sheikh Ben Bass said about this statement. He said, this statement is too concise to the extent that it may be misused by the people who misconstrue the meaning of Allah's words. And it may be uh, uh, misused by the people who will even go so far as to deny Allah's names and attributes. But this scholar here used this terminology uh, just to, uh, 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 to try to break things down to the people. He didn't say that this is what Allah says. This is the, these are the words he used. Because as Allah tells us himself in the Quran, in the interpretation, the meaning, Allah knows what is presently before them and what will be after them. But we know nothing of what he knows in knowledge. So that's why this uh, uh, scholar made these words. He said, Allah is transcendent. That means he is beyond all limits. He's beyond all ends. He beyond, he's beyond all components. He's not saying that Allah is everywhere. What he is saying instead is that he's nothing like us. He can be in a million places at once. He can do that which we could never understand how he does. And this is why as Muslims, you know, the prophet taught us to not go around thinking too much about how Allah does what he does or how Allah is what he is because shaitan will cause you to question, well, who created Allah? And a lot of the Qadariya or the misguided people, the people who innovate, they still to this day argue about, you know, Allah rising above his throne. How can he rise above his throne? To this day, they argue this. He can do what we cannot do. His wisdom and his attributes supersede any of ours, guys. Allah has a face. Allah has hands. Allah has feet. Allah has a shin. But his attributes are nothing like our face, our hand, our feet, our shin. So you don't want to get into these type of debates that you see a lot of young Muslim youth and old ones too, debating on TikTok and other social platforms, arguing, screaming, hollering, you know, speaking without knowledge, you know, trying to liken Allah to his creation, using terms to negate Allah's attributes, to say that he doesn't have hands, he doesn't have a foot. He doesn't have a shin. To deny this stuff takes you out of Islam and makes you an unbeliever. And this is why I'm always stressing to the youth. You know, I know it's summertime. You know, people like to get lost on social media. Y'all need to destroy that TikTok. That TikTok, I can see why they banning it because it's already banned in 20 states here in America. You know, I, I, I see why, because it's a very dangerous medium. You got a lot of losers just wasting their time on there. They think they are giving dawah, but they're not. They're just arguing, debating, uh, wasting time, time that could have been spent learning Islam, time that could have been spent truly get, uh, talking to people who are interested in learning the deen. Ain't nobody sitting on TikTok interested in learning the deen. It's all about debate. It ain't no different than Clubhouse and them other platforms, a place to go and argue, debate, and express yourself. Don't get caught up into that crap, guys. Okay? Don't get caught up into those arguments. Also, <clears throat> this man who wrote this book at Tahawi, he was a person of the Sunnah. He was not an innovator. He did not believe that Allah is everywhere. OK, he just spent his life trying to break it down. You know how a law is nothing like us. OK, and uh, the statements that he makes regarding the Islamic belief, you know, again, are just used to, for that to explain things, not to say that a law is not what he says he is. OK. 
And I want y'all to understand that if y'all ever come upon these people arguing this, we have to understand guys, when it comes to issues of belief, issues of Akita, our belief should be as the companions was. We should believe of Allah what they believed and how they believed of him. The companions and those who are devote, devoted to Allah, you know, they all agree that Allah is nothing like us. And they don't waste their time trying to figure out his face, hands and things, and neither should we. So this is all that this part of the book is speaking about. Basically in those few pages, what it is is just uh, disproving the allegations made against this uh, author who was a great scholar of the past. You know, his Akita was correct. And this is what the people did to him, Ibn Taymiyyah and other, you know, when they try to explain things in terms that people understand that the, the critics want to label them innovators and they um, imprison them. They beat them, imprison them, persecute them. They take the truth that they come with and twist it around to say they said something that they didn't say when they were really people of the Sunnah trying to express in terms that others can understand what Allah is saying. All right, so I'm going to stop right here for today. Like I said, this class was short. This part of the book uh, is just short, just basically um, defending uh, uh, the author. And I want to remind everybody to make sure you join the class at 11 because the class at 11 tonight basically goes hand in hand with this because we're going to be covering those uh, next pages of, of, Oh Allah, forgive me. We're going to speak about the major sins and you're going to find out that this is one of the major sins. This is one of the sins that Allah will not forgive if you die upon it. And that is likening him to his creation uh, or denying what he says of himself. So make sure that everybody is here at 11 p.m. So I'm going to stop right here. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Are there any questions or comments?